one of the things we talk about a lot, and maybe it's our background as comedians who are concerned about increasing restrictions around speech, people being, you know, cancelled for the wrong comment or whatever, that sort of thing, which does happen quite a lot uh, in our experience. As someone who's on the left and cares about foreign policy, cares about economics, what do you make of what they what they sort of call woke stuff, or woke culture, woke politics? How do you feel that's useful, or is it a distraction from the main issues the left should focus on? What do you make of it? To the extent woke refers to how I see its original intention, which is just to expand consciousness about the world be conscious of subconscious biases that we inherit as a result of living in a unequal racist system. I think that is good, you know, and I I'm on board with it. Of course, like everything it gets, it's been exploited to distract us from the important issues like the ones I've been talking about and to sort of silo politics into this very narrow thing where it's no longer about improving people's material well-being, meeting their basic needs, opposing things like imperialism and war, but instead very much focused solely on solely on identity at the exclusion of everything else. There's nothing wrong, I think, with recognizing the role of identity in our biases and trying to correct that. But when you do that at the expense, and in fact, in opposition to everything else, I think it's a very real problem. And the attempts to cancel people for saying the wrong things is, I think, a part of this where it's this like, effort to push us further and further away from focusing on the things that matter, that impact people's lives, and instead on these semantic, narrow concerns that I just don't really resonate with the vast majority of people. And that's certainly an issue on the left that I think is worrying that, you know, I'm all for focusing on identity issues and uh, you know, uh, for calling people by the right pronouns. I, I think we have to respect However, someone wants to be, you know, uh, described, we have to respect it. But the problem is when people try to make these things the sole issue uh, at the exclusion and in opposition to everything else, that's a problem. And you see that especially now with the Democratic Party leadership, the DNC. They love this talk because instead of talking about, you know, the working class, the minimum wage, uh, or the impact of sanctioning and bombing foreign countries, they can brag about how, how diverse. The cabinet of officials is that is carrying out these same awful policies. So sometimes this becomes a smokescreen to continue the very same policies, the very same racist policies of old. So that's that's where I stand on that. And I'm certainly not comfortable with the incredible amount of suppression of free speech that's that's gone on recently. And, you know, we saw that here in the U.S. before the election where there was this article in The New York Post about Joe Biden and his son Hunter and his uh, Hunter's corrupt business dealings abroad. And literally, F, when you wanted to share that on Twitter, you couldn't. Twitter blocked yeah. people mm. from sharing that. And that is a manifestation of this increased policing and censorship of speech. And it's, you know, uh, and in the case of, of this Hunter Biden story, one way in which they justified it is they said that this might be Russian disinformation. And that's another way <laughs> all this has happened is that anything that offends U.S. elites gets labeled Russian disinformation and that way we can bury it. So, you know, all this I think is, is concerning. 